Welcome to Co City TV, Learn Chess with the Chess Doctor. I'm Dr. Jovita, your host. And yes, I'm the Chess Doctor, okay? So we've been on the journey of chess so far. I think this is lecture six, okay? And I want to believe you've been following the lectures from lecture one. Now, if you, this is the first time you're coming across this program, it would be nice to go and watch from lecture one to this moment so you can follow the journey of chess. And the good thing is I actually made it um, very, there are a lot of things white can decide to do because at this point white is obviously winning right but let's try something so let's assume white does this pushes the pawn makes the move c4 okay so let's assume white does c4 if white is doing c4 at this minute like this attacking this knight the knight can possibly want to run to this square which is not a very good square because both the bishop both the bishop and the rook is holding the square it can't come here because the bishop is also holding the square can it go here? Yes, it can go here. Definitely. So it's going back home. Okay? And um, it can't come here. It can't come here. It can't capture this because of this bishop. Okay? So automatically attacking this bishop, this knight is going to be giving it um, a possible square to go. Imagine this pawn was already here. Okay? At this point, with this pawn push, this is a dead, a dead knight. Are we together? This is a dead knight because after this attack, there's no valuable square. It can come to coming here. This rook is going to capture it. It can't come here. There's a pawn. It can't come here. There's a pawn. The best it can do instead of going, just die like that, right? The best is just take a pawn along and that's to capture this pawn. Okay. And then this bishop collects it. Okay. So basically what I'm saying is making your pieces less mobile. That's the whole idea about this. Okay. You're making the pieces less mobile okay yes that's the whole idea because at this point the piece cannot come here the piece cannot imagine that maybe the next the move white had made before prior to this moment was this and then black decided to do this okay trying to immobilize the knight's movement black made this move preventing the knight from flipping to this square are we together and that's the blunder so probably after doing this and black did this preventing this one white refuses and then decides to attack this okay and that's how that knight becomes a dead piece after immobilizing it okay now in the case like this you observe that black actually used his hands to block the flight square because this is a flight this was supposed to be a flight square for the knight okay and then he made the move and blocked it so in chess usually i'll tell you um your opponent always make the mistake it's now left for you to identify the mistake and then know how to punish the mistake. It's one thing to identify the mistake. It's another thing to know how to punish it. This was a blunder on black side. At least at this moment, it appears to be a blunder. And um, if it's a blunder at this moment, imagine you're not, you're, you're not grounded. You don't really understand how to punish it. You have identified for that, okay, it's a blunder, but you don't know how to punish the move. Okay? If you don't have to punish the move, black made a mistake, will be able to rectify the mistake and continue if he knows how to do it. So chess basically is about what do you know and what your opponent knows and then how much can you actually see the mistakes your opponent gets to make okay so um okay i'll be right back after this break hope when i'm back uh, we'll talk about um a different aspect of this we've talked about now what we just finished at this minute is just talking about um making your opponent's piece immobile next time we'll be back we're talking about fox deflections and decoy i'll be right back Thanks for still staying with me on the program Learn Chess with the Chess Doctor on Cole City TV. Okay, so we've talked about so many things before now. So you can feel free to actually go back to watch the videos. And, but for now, we want to talk about um, Fox, okay? Middle game. We're talking about different strategies and tactics, okay? So we've talked about the first tactics, making your piece immobile. Second tactics is going to be getting more attacks. And how do you get more attacks? With forks, with decoys, and with deflections. There's so many, you know. Usually, middle game is a course on its own. Deflection is a course on its own. So it all depends. But I'll try to wrap it up so you have an idea of everything. And you'll be able to just make simple deflections, simple forks, and simple decoys on board, okay? So with this position on the board, it's white to move at this moment, and white made this move, which is appears to be a blunder. So after making this move, what's the ideal thing for black to do, which you might not see, but it's okay. Black can do this, knight, knight to d5, check. There's a check for the king, which means the king has to move. There's also an attack on the rook, there's an attack on the bishop. This is called the fork. 
Okay, fork is ability for a piece to attack multiple pieces and still not be able to be captured at that moment. Okay, so at this moment, you're seeing that the bishop can, the knight can attack one, two, three, three pieces in one move, just in one knight flip. Okay, and after that, you find out that no piece can actually prevent, no, no piece can actually capture this knight in, the, in this square at this moment. So with this check, the king has to move. Okay, so let's say the king moves here and then the knight goes to collect this. Okay, of which if he collects this, it's just exchanging, obviously the king is going to take this back. And this is like exchanging three naira, three naira for five naira. Remember when we talked about the worth of pieces. Okay, so fox comes in different forms. It cannot only be... Um, it's not always only for the knight. It can also a pawn. It can also be on a pawn. A pawn can actually get it done. What do I mean? Let's say we have a pawn here, and we have a pawn here. Okay, and at this point, a black to move. Black does this check. Black is attacking this and attacking this. And remember, you can't capture this because this pawn is holding the square. Okay, so this is also a fox. So the king has to move, and as the king is moving, you have to take this one yourself too. Okay, so that's also a fox. So it means pawns can also give fox too. We also have nine. Um, bishops can also do the same thing too. Bishops can do the same thing. And, um, you know, just something like this. Okay. So. Okay, so imagine this. A bishop on this square, check, and attacking this too. Okay, so that's also a fork. Basically, a piece attacking more than one piece, and still no piece can capture it. That is what a fork is. I hope you can identify. There are going to be definitely a lot. We're going to have chess puzzles where I'm going to portray chess pieces and puzzles, and then I expect you to tell me what principle is being applied in that position. Okay, so the next we're going to talk about is... Um, Okay, I have to set the board. I'll be right back after the break. Let me set the board before you come back. See you guys. Welcome back and thanks for still staying with me. So on this particular um, pause we have here, I want to teach you a tactic which is called um, discovered attack. Okay, what's discovered attack? Discovered attack is when a piece is given a direct attack and on the movement of that piece that is given the direct attack another piece is exposed to capture or exposed to attack do you get it i'll give an example so looking at this now is white to play white is has a bishop on d3 imagine going diagonally and capturing this pawn on h8 okay once you capture the pawn on h8 the next thing that happens is a check because it's under the line of attack for the for the king or to the king rather so the king has to move so the best bet for the king is to take this and after taking this the, the rook takes the queen this is called a discovered attack i'll play it back again so you can see what i'm saying i'll have to play it back again for you okay we have this here and then we have a pawn here discovered attack okay so the bishop here is what is acting as the piece that is obstructing this attack Okay, but because you want to make a compulsive move for black to respond, because nothing stops the bishop from doing this, right? Of which if he does this, black can capture this, and this is a checkmate. Okay, or it's a check, not a checkmate, it's a check because the bishop can cover it back. Okay, but instead of doing this, coming, running away, he decides to push the king, take the bishop, take the pawn with a check, so that the king must respond. And then the queen gets to fall. That's a discovered attack. Okay. It would be nice for you to play it back and understand what the discovered attack is. I'll do it again. So from here now, white to play. White did not move here. Okay. White had to take the initiative of capturing this bishop. The pawn on h7 check. And then this comes here. And then this takes six. All right. So you can see that already white is losing or black is losing a queen already. On top of a bishop all right so this is discovered attack we've talked about fox we talk about discovered attacks and then i want to talk about um deflection okay so deflection is a trick that forces you to, you want to push a piece out of a given square okay so that you can have opportunity to um, attack that square that's deflection there's so much there's so many mid mid game tricks middle game tricks there's a lot of them there's so much okay but um I'll still give you more in the next video before we start end game. 
Okay, but before then, I want to talk about something, planning. How do you plan? You know, this is a skill you should learn, and this is also a skill that you learn in chess, basically. With the whole thing you saw me do, it's, it's not a one-move thing. It's a couple of moves, knowing the exact move to make at the right time. Okay, so planning is just step-by-step step putting things together to want to achieve a common goal. And then for you to see your plan, you have to have the expected goal you have. You don't plan when you don't have an expected goal. Do you understand? Simple, you want to finish secondary school, you want to get into the university, you have to write YEC first. If you've not written YEC, then that's the first thing you have to write JAMP. Okay, so these are steps that you need to take. Then how do you write JAMP? You need to have to prepare for JAMP. How do you write for YEC? You need to prepare for YEC. So it's like step-by-step step, things you need to put in order to be able to achieve a goal. Okay, so for you to be a successful planner, first you have to be able to make, um, have a goal. Now, this goal should have a time frame. Okay, you don't just have a goal and then there's no time frame attached to it. There should be a time frame. Then you should break into pieces, you know, you break it into different steps. The various things you feel you should do that will help you achieve the goal you're looking for. Okay, I repeat again, you have a common goal you want to get and then you should break it into pieces. Example, you tell me you want to open a store in 2024 and then it means practically you have to um, be able to save up money you should be able to have a budget you should be able to have a location you should be able to know exactly what you want to sell have an idea of the market survey you know there are a lot of just practical breaking into practical activities that you can achieve with time frame usually i'll tell you every month you break down the goals you want to have into months or in two weeks if you're so diligent but usually months give you ample time for a lot of things really in a country where there's so much uncertainties if you break down your goals into every month then you'll be able to um, maneuver the uncertainties and then have ample time and um, a lot of things to be able to put them um, put them into reality okay so for this skill for the day it's planning okay i hope to see you guys in my next video when i will teach you another wonderful thing in the game of chess until then, I'm still your chess doctor, Dr. Jovita. I hope to see you guys next week, same station, same time. Please follow, send me your questions, I may DM me away. Drop your questions in the comment section, I will definitely respond to all of them. And yes, um, enjoy the game of chess as enjoy life itself. See you guys next week. Bye.